Hello folks and welcome back to 802 Garage, or if it is your first time here, well, welcome to 802 Garage. If you like old Japanese project cars like this 1997 Eclipse GSX, then my channel is probably for you. Today I'm going to delve back into the engine bay of this old red beast to install the ever so crucial parts which transfer power from the engine to the transmission. I have a brand new performance flywheel and clutch assembly to put into this car. So I hope you will enjoy me on this correctly torqued journey to getting this thing actually running again. That's right folks, it has been coming for far too long, but I finally get to install this Exidy Racing Clutch Kit and Exidy Racing Flywheel into my Eclipse GSX. And I'm very excited because these performance parts are actually worth more than I paid for the entire car. I did do an entire unboxing video, you can go watch if you like, and uh, I did get a steal of a price on these, so go check that out. Here is the flywheel, nice and uh, fancy. Mm, performance parts and uh, the first thing I need to do is drive the dowel pins into this and I actually already put them in the freezer just to make that a little bit easier. I do also of course have um, all the needed flywheel bolts. I had to replace one because the previous owners had actually used a hardware store bolt, just a normal silver bolt and I have new clutch cover slash pressure pick bolts, whatever you want to call it. And uh, man this clutch kit looks really nice so I'll tell you that much. It has some instructions. Nice pressure plate, throw out bearing, line of tool, and the clutch is in here as well. Like I said, I have a full unboxing on these, but so I'm going to go ahead and install those dowel pins using a C-clamp, and I'll show you that right now. All right, well, this turned out to be a major pain in the butt, so the technique I'm actually using is I heated up the dowel pin hole, had the dowel pin itself in the freezer, put a little bit of grease on it, set it in the hole, make sure not to burn yourself, obviously. Just get it started with the hammer. And then we're using this big old C clamp to finish the job. Use some paper towel to not screw up the back side. And so this takes some finagling. As you can see, this would obviously be better if it was you know mounted on a bench. And you know, I was worried I was going to damage something, so I looked it up online, and apparently sometimes these are just a pain to install. You know, try to make sure you got it lined up nice and straight. And then I've got my BFH. And at a certain point, you should stop making progress. You can feel it kind of bottom out. Whew. So I think that's good. But by golly, that's hard. Whew. So those two look about even to me. So I think we're good. I'm going to do the third one off camera. All right, no lie, for some reason installing those dowel pins ended up being hellish and I mushroomed them a little bit trying to use a hammer to make sure they were all the way in and had to just grind it down a little bit. I checked and they locate the pressure plate just fine so it's gonna be perfect, but my advice is 100% if you're installing dowel pins into a flywheel, put them in the freezer for at least a couple hours and then heat the crap out of the hole they're supposed to go in and they do go in much easier because the third one was definitely the easiest and uh, I had to do the least work to make sure that everything located properly. So. Next step is obviously to uh, clean off the, you know, clutch surface on this and the mating surface as well. You can just use regular brake parts cleaner for this. Also a good idea to have any of the mating surfaces nice and clean. Even a little bit of grit in there could cause big problems down the road. Double check that before you install the clutch.
All right, so I did some thorough research and checked with a bunch of sources and the torque spec for the flywheel bolts is 94 to 101 foot pounds. I'm just gonna go for 100 foot pounds and I do have six of the original bolts which I cleaned up very nicely and one new bolt to replace the actual literal hardware store bolt that somebody else used on the previous installation. So you can check out some of my old Eclipse videos if you wanna see that terrible excuse for mechanic work. So I'm just gonna get to torquing these down and I'm probably gonna do it in steps of 50, 75, and then 100. Got a little Chris Fix shot going here, but the instructions from Mitsubishi do say to use Loctite, so I'm just gonna use a little drop about three quarters of the way down the threads. And they specify a specific type of 3M bolt locker, but I just have the blue stuff and it should work. And you don't need a ton, and only about the forward half of these threads actually goes into the crankshaft, so that's really where you need it. And obviously there is a hole that you have to match to the dowel on the crank, which should luckily also help hold it in place. Well, this one doesn't seem to want to thread in nicely, so I'm going to get another bolt real quick. There we go. Looks like the flywheel's just a tiny bit misaligned. And that's what's causing the bolts to go in hard. So I'll just grab the ratchet. And these are uh, 19 millimeters. There we go. Just barely get that one started. And yes, you should always go in a crisscross or star pattern with these. I'm just barely snugging those bolts down to hold the flywheel in place. And you'll notice this is actually the brand new bolt because the threads only go about halfway down. They must have uh, changed the design over time just to save a little bit of money. No reason to thread the whole bolt if part of it never goes in anything. Interestingly, the new bolt is an 18, but I believe the old ones are a 19. Yes, they are. Unless they're just that rounded off by the previous idiots, but no, it would appear this one's definitely smaller. I don't think that'll have a negative effect in anything, but it does kind of bother me. Actually, my uh, kind of obsessive tendencies are gonna make it so I swap these two so the one new bolt is across from the dowel just because that's the way I want it. So I'll do that real quick. All right, I'm just gonna tighten these all down real quick. And then I'm gonna actually torque them. So like I said, you do go in a crisscross pattern. All right, now I gotta get the torque wrench. All right, I wanted to get you a slightly better view of the torquing action. So I do have the torque wrench set to 50 foot pounds right now. All right, and annoyingly, this is the one that is an 18. Sorry, I know I'm moving the camera a little bit. All right, the torque wrench is now set to 75 foot-pounds.
Alrighty, and finally for 100 foot pounds. And we'll see if I can do this without the engine trying to turn on me. I wish this one wasn't so loose. I almost feel like I should get the 17 millimeter socket for this and try it. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so the 17 does fit much better on this uh, newer bolt. So that's what I'm gonna use. Come on. Oop, nope, turn the engine over. Oops. So I'm gonna have to find a way to lock it in place. All right, so a quick internet search found me the way to uh, lock the crankshaft in place by putting a uh, breaker bar on the harmonic balancer. So I'll show you that trick in just a second, but I'm gonna finish torquing these first. It will spin a little, but it should stop. There we go. Come on, Bessie. There you go, it spun a little bit extra that second click. And I will go back around before I'm done. All right, I'll go back around one more time. Come on, Bessie. Most of them are budging another little bit before they go. All right, and since those all budged, just to be absolutely sure, I'm gonna go around one more time. There we go, none of them moved that time, so we're good. So now I'm gonna show you that trick that I was told. Basically, just put a half inch breaker bar over the crankshaft bolt on this side, and it's a 22 millimeter, but there's also actually a half inch square in there, so you can just use a half inch breaker bar. I just found it easier to use the socket because it was a better way for me to get it locked into place. I actually locked it up through the suspension arm, but you can just straight up put a half inch square or a half inch square extension into the end of the crankshaft bolt and prop it against something to hold it or have someone else hold the bar for you while you tighten. All right, the raccoon's back in the middle of my clutch job. Go. Oh. That is so good. Get out of here. Ha, I'm your ha. All right, there he goes. <laughs> Runs kind of funny. As with the flywheel, of course, got to clean off the pressure plate mating surface. Should be good to go. Unfortunately, it is getting dark out, so I won't be putting on the transmission today, but I do have brand new pressure plate bolts, and I have the Exidy Racing clutch and pressure plate, and I know that these are supposed to be torqued to 11 to 16 foot-pounds. I'm gonna go for the full 16 because this is an upgraded strength kit, and hopefully that will work out well. And I did put just a tiny bit of lube on this just to prevent any kind of rust. I cleaned off the pressure plate and I did clean off the flywheel again real quick. And I do have the alignment tool that came with the Exidy Racing Kit. And the 4G63 does not use a pilot bearing or bushing, so there was no need to tap one of those into the flywheel. Handily, they do actually print that this is the transmission side. You can see it says right there. TM side, and so I know that this face is this way. And start out with the alignment tool, right through there. Make sure you get it in the flywheel, all the way nicely seated. Double check that you have the transmission side facing towards the transmission. Then get your pressure plate. And I have already applied just a little bit of Loctite to each of the 
six uh, clutch cover bolts. I'm gonna get this mated up and it should mount onto the dowel pins. Because I made sure it fit before I put it on the car, which is a good idea, of course, since I mangled these a little bit. That may actually be as much as I can get right now, so it might have been useful to actually leave the dowel pins out a little bit more, but just get some of the bolts started. I could not actually find instructions anywhere on exactly how far to press the dowel pins in, and I did find some for other models that said to just press them in all the way until they were seated, so that's what I went with, but now I'm thinking I should have just gone about halfway with the pins. But either way, they located it well enough to get the bolts started. And I'm just gonna get these uh, a little bit tight. But before I go any further, I do wanna double check that this is nicely centered. I think that's about as nice as it's gonna get, if I'm being honest, so. All right, so I'm just gonna go around in a crisscross and go a little bit at a time. Let's finally butt it up. That one too. Like I said, I have this set to uh, 16 foot pounds so I can remove the clutch alignment tool, of course. That's out of my way. Kind of interesting with these actually you feel it tighten up quite a bit just before it's going to torque nothing like doing the flywheel bolts but this is a pretty light torque spec so i'm definitely going to triple check these because this is pretty light All right, all set. Whew. Well, I am gross and it's getting dark, so that's obviously gonna be it for today, but now the transmission is pretty much ready to go back in, which is kind of a pain because I gotta do some weird stuff with the car, like jack it up and pull the ball joints again and whatnot so I can swing the axles out of the way. But hopefully it's all gonna work out. I'm pretty happy with the way that install went, even though it took a little longer than planned. Uh, those dowel pins really threw me off and took a bunch of extra time. Uh, it is what it is. You live and learn. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video and these instructions on how to put in the flywheel and the clutch cover. And if you made it this far in the video, please let me know in the comments. Tell me what you thought. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. If you are a subscriber and you want to see me finish this eclipse and get it running, then hit the notification bell and you'll definitely know. Leave a like, leave a comment. I always like talking to you. All that stuff. If you made it to the end, you know all this and I appreciate you. I'll catch you all very soon on 802 Garage.